But wait, no. Can you hear my AC? No. No. Not at all? Oh, not cool. Least, no. Oh, man. I could have kept it on. Fuck. All right. <laughs> it's, it's so hot in New York today. This whole week, it's fucking hot. You're fucking hot, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you, better, you better butter me up. It's fucking 5.30. We said 4.30. Oh, then we changed. Come on, Anthony. Yeah, then you changed to Did 5. You, oh, then Cody will use any excuse. He's like, well, <laughs> you said 5, so therefore 5.30 for me. Yeah. Hey, baby boy. Originally, we said four. Get better at time, motherfucker. Hey, I, I, I'm not involved. I'm not involved in this. I was on time and ready to go ASAP. You're head of the class. Today. ASAP Rocky. It's what they call me right now. ASAP Jake. Loop. <laughs> <laughs> Close app Cody. Yeah. Time suck Cody. Time suck <laughs> Cody. No, we. I, I, I still love you, Cody. I just. I just hate your lateness. Like if I could murder the lateness inside of you, I would very quickly. You would, you would, you would have to murder Cody himself. I know. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's, no, there's no separating. Those things are mutually exclusive. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like a venom symbiote. It's now attached to him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cody's like, we are late. <laughs> 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 oh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Well, hey, commend the door. I was going to say that as soon as I hopped on. Commend the I love this episode. Dude, this was a good episode. Yeah, yeah. Our intro to our boy. Furio. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. Well, for those of you that are tuning in, <laughs> this is episode two of Sopranos Summer. I'm one of your hosts, Jacob H. You already know who's with me, Cody Cannon, Anthony Iannaccio. And today we talk season two episode, shit, what number? Four. Yeah, season two, episode four. Commendatory. And uh, dude, it's great. I love it. It's a fun episode. Yeah, it's cool. Fun. It's, it takes place in Italy. it's it's kind of a filler episode in the best way, if that makes sense. It's like a setup episode for like things to come, you know? Oh yeah, I guess it was a filler episode. I don't know. I just thought it was. Uh... I don't mean no, but I mean that in a good way. I don't mean that. I mean like it's it's the stakes aren't as high. It doesn't. It, it like it's a lot of setup for what's to come down the road in the sopranos yeah and I, but i but it's still like entertaining and there's value but it's just it's kind of got like a light a lightness to it yeah i, I mean i kind of get what you mean like the episode like kind of like the episode we did for season one but i think even more so this episode isn't really typical of a sopranos episode because he's traveling to italy you know it's not in this it's not in new jersey although i yeah. mean throughout the show we see him travel but it's a different dynamic because Tony's a fish out of water in this scenario. He doesn't really have all the power that he usually does. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a cool episode. As, as, a, as a brief setup, he goes to Italy to pretty much do business with their Italian counterparts and uh, ends up getting to sell a key cars, guy. right? He's selling them cars that they're stealing. He takes Uncle Junior, which actually, dude, that's such a great scene. He takes Uncle Junior's car operation. But, dude, going back to that scene, easily one of the funniest cuts you could ever yes. be. You know Churchill, what I'm talking about? Churchill. Yeah. 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 Is, is once is once that family gets their car jacked and the dad is just like fucking and says the n word. Yeah, and you're he's like, like, he's, yeah, and then he's like, well, who else, huh? Who else? And then it cuts, yeah. and it's Tony right to Soprano Tony, yeah. looking at the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> so so you funny. know that he hired the carjackers. Right. Yeah, and it's also yeah. a theme in the show where a lot of times they hire black guys to do their business so it doesn't look like they're the ones doing it in the exactly. most racist, like, exactly. you know, mafia way possible. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. But it's, just, it's such a funny cut because it's like, well, who else, huh? Who else? And yeah. then it's Tony Soprano smiling. At it. Yeah. Uh, and up until that moment, you're kind of like, oh, man, this guy's getting his car jacked for no reason. And then, you know, you're going to feel bad for him. But once he says that, you're like, oh, fuck this guy. I'm glad you got car jacked. Yeah, he's, just, he's just a racist. Yeah. Fuck that dude. That's why his dog ran away. <laughs> Churchill. Yeah. Churchill. Churchill. <laughs> Sopranos could be so fucking funny. I don't know if we talked it's about so that. It's so silly. <laughs> it's just yeah, so yeah, funny sometimes. Great. One of the best comedies when it's not e- it doesn't need to try to be, but like the joke writing in this in this show is so good. Yeah. Yeah. I especially love when uh like Paulie and Tony are at that dinner in Italy. Yes. And they meet they meet like the old the old Don, you know, like the, the OG Don. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Polly leans over to Tony because Tony was gonna give him a golf club, and Polly goes, He's like, Tony, if you give him a golf club, he's gonna probably try to fuck it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and like it's cool also to see like when Polly doesn't like the food and he like asks just for regular spaghetti. Yeah. And you see the, the dudes in Italian like talk shit about him. He, and the dude says to his friend, he's like, and you thought the French were classless pieces of shit. Or no Germans. He's like, the yeah, Germans. Germans. Yeah. So you thought the Germans were classless pieces of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that scene too because Polly calls it gravy. Gravy, I feel like that's yeah. like a big thing like Italian people like to call. Well, I feel like other people would say tomato sauce, but we say gravy and he's like saying it to them. It's like, oh, what are you like? What are you talking about, dude? Like who would know? I always you found know? it interesting in the show that a lot of them call it gravy. I'll be honest, like the Italians I knew growing up and even my brother-in-law's family, they don't call it gravy. They call it like sauce. Yeah, they're fake Italians, but it's a, that's okay. <laughs> no, <they're not. laughs> no, it's like a thing. Like First it's a thing. Generation. Like some people, yeah. Some people call it gravy. Some people call it sauce. It's yeah. it's just you know it's a, that's know. a kind of a contention. I didn't hear anyone call it gravy until I watched The Sopranos, and so that was always weird for me. Yeah, when I was a kid, no one knew what I was talking about. I was like, because I, I don't actually like to put that on my uh, pasta. You don't like red sauce? No. Yeah. So I was as a kid, Are you I'd a be like, I'm, eater, Anthony. <laughs> it's definitely when it comes to that. So like. When I was a kid, I'd be like, I don't like gravy on my on my macaroni. And my friends would be like, what do you mean? Like the stuff you put like on Thanksgiving, like on yeah, turkey? See, that's gravy to me. <laughs> I'd be like, no, what are you talking see, about? See, gravies can be, gravy's a lot of different stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But that being said, it's not a marinara or a bolognese. You know what I mean? It would just be a saw, you know, it's either, yeah. you know, it, it's just a, they're just different things, you know, gravy is thickened with like flour and shit and mm. butter. Yeah. So we're calling it that, but it's not really that. It's just, yeah. I don't know. It's definitely an Italian, it's just American, like an Italian thing. American thing. Just typical yeah. stupid wops. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Hey. That's so- Jake, you better watch what you're saying. Oh, oh. <laughs> hey. that's insane. <laughs> yeah, I just pretty much every part. I love B- Big Pussy's arc in this episode. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's a big. It's a big, big pussy episode. It is a big, big pussy episode. A lot of big pussy in this. I like at the very beginning. I mean, it's obvious that we know Pussy's talking to uh, like an FBI informant, and he's yeah. he's going to betray or he's betraying actively betraying Tony. And there's a part at the very beginning because they're trying to watch The Godfather, and Polly saying the line, oh, "I knew it was you, Fredo." And yeah. while he's saying that, it's just is focusing on Pussy, like so obviously, like yeah. of course it's the Pussy is, I guess, the closest to a Fredo. Right now in Sopranos to Tony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the ultimate betrayer, that's why. And he gets what he deserves at the end of the season, that's for Who sure. Who does he frame and like convince Tony that is the rat? No, well, in the first season, they think it's Jimmy Altieri, another fat, heavy set guy, and they kill him. Yeah, okay, okay, yes. yes. But then you find out at the end of this season, it's the episode where Tony actually has food poisoning and he's having like weird dreams. Yeah, he, he goes to Pussy's house and he looks in his house and he finds like tapes and a microphone and everything and he, he like knows. Yeah, so he like he, like the, the thought never left Tony's head that Pussy was a rat. He was always still suspicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that scene where he's in the the Party City type store and he runs into that Elvis guy, the Elvis dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a tense moment because you know, like this guy's like putting out all his information. Like it seems like a normal thing happening it's just like oh it's you but like the fact that he's there with someone that guy knows something's up like he's not being explicit but like he's like he knows pussy's acting weird and yeah well we well, see he, what happens to that guy well he even says like weird specific things and it's like it's it also goes back to like 
Like you'd have to know the language. And uh, Donnie Brasco deals with it really well because Pussy says, hey, here's a friend of ours. Whenever someone says a friend of ours, it means they're in the mafia. Mm. Yeah, because he also says, "I ain't." he's like, I don't know no main guy. Uh, exactly. Guy he's like, he's like, I'm, he's like, I'm wondering if I ever met anyone connected from Delaware. And the answer is, he like looks at both of them. He's like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you can tell that dude's suspicious, even though he's like clearly dumb as fuck. Yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, and then he, he just gets brutally beat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. Elvis. R.I.P. Elvis. R. I. P. Dude, Pussy's story. He, it, you like almost feel bad for him. No, you feel really bad for him. He likes definitely loves Tony. Yeah. In the episode with AJ's uh, confirmation, Pussy's like crying on the bathroom for like yeah. feeling bad for betraying Tony. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't really feel bad for Pussy though. He seems like a shitty husband and he just he just does his job, but he got caught yeah, and he he became all a rat. shitty husband. Yeah, exactly. But this episode <laughs> focuses on that part especially how his wife yeah. uh is going through like a cancer scare and he kind of he's is basically he's ignoring her. He, like he's yeah. so focused on his shit that he does not give a fuck about his wife and she's talking about divorce. I don't know if I view it. I mean, like, yeah, I'm not defending him. Like, he's they're all shitty husbands, but it's also mm-hmm. like Big Pussy has it hard because you think about it. He ha- literally has to lead a double life, so he has to hide like that shit from his wife and his family. Like, that's like what it's cool to see it like take a toll on him mentally over the course of the two seasons. Yeah, I don't know. I just I didn't. I even throughout the show, I just don't like Pussy as much as the other characters. Like, oh, I, I like think Pussy. I like every other guy in the crew better than him. I disagree. I like. Pussy. Uh, Pussy I always liked character. Pussy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Anthony, <laughs> big puss. Yeah, big pussy, bumpet zero. Yeah, yeah. Everyone else is is it gets a pass, but for me, I don't know. He's just like his ratness, his extreme ratness. I don't Anthony, like you. I would figure you would like him. You ratted on someone in school about taking your. Video. <laughs> 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 oh, we're, we're, didn't we talk about this? Listen, no, we, we, yeah, <laughs> I never gave you a pass though. If this was. <laughs> If we were in school right now, it would be you, me, and Cody on a boat. <laughs> but no, see, here's the thing. I wouldn't rat out yeah. I, would, I, would, I would never, ever rat out you and Cody. That's the difference. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, that that, case, that's the point I made last time, too. You don't rat out your crew, but I can rat out this dweeb who took my shit, and that's the only way to get it back. Like, what other power do I have in that situation? To kill if him. it's like if it's like <laughs> to kill him, you said in yeah. sixth grade. In sixth grade, yeah, you gotta <laughs> put him in cement boots. Mm, I should have tried that. Cement boots, <laughs> dude. I uh, I also like in this episode once again, like deals with like Tony psychology, especially with uh, the boss over in Italy being a woman. Yeah, and dude, Alisa. their dynamic was so cool. Yeah, she was so hot. Yeah, yeah, he definitely wanted to bank her. She knew that. Yeah, I mean, he said so at the end. He's like, "Yeah, I do, but I don't shit where I eat." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would have shat where I ate. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Jake do be shitting where he be. <laughs> <laughs> no, she kept and she kept saying, "I must remind you of someone from back home," and I'm assuming it's Melfi. Yeah, I feel like Melfi. that's the dynamic, right? Yeah, it's Melfi. Yeah, but also it's Melfi, and it's also really like his mom. Yeah. Specifically, there's a real good seed that like shows the like psychology of like him and his mom and with her. It's when uh, her and him and Alisa got an argument about how much for the cars and giving him Furio. And so he wants to go and she's like, Tony, come down to eat. He's like, no, I've said all I needed to say. And she just goes like, he's like, all right, I'm coming down. (laughs) Kind of like a kid, you know, being called down for dinner. Like he has a weakness towards this like maternal uh, you know, psychology. So, yeah, yeah, yeah a, woman, sure. a woman in power. Exactly, a woman in power, which is what Livia was and Melfi mm-hmm. is. So, yeah. No, that's that makes sense. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. Dude, Tony, I just love Tony's. He like he lives with his dick. You know what I mean? He's a gangster in that way. Yeah, I mean, he showed restraint on this episode. This episode is one of the few times he do, but like he'll even like. Hit on his like best people's girls and shit, you know. But like Adriana and them. Adriana, yeah. uh, fucking I mean, Adriana was hot. 
Yeah, Ralph's chick. Oh yeah, Valentina. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He gets into a whole thing with her. Oh yeah. She was the hottest. I always. She was always my favorite Gumar out of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But uh, dude, I like. I love in this episode uh, the scene with Polly and the prostitute. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the best part is like in that one scene, he's, she's like lighting up a cigarette and, or no, she's like washing herself in the bathroom and he goes, uh, he goes, and who said you're not a great conversationalist? Fucking twat. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Dude, Polly just is like, he's so, he's one of the best. He's such a great character. Yeah. yeah and in that episode, he's constantly getting shit on by everyone in Italy, anyone around him. Like anytime he's enjoying himself, Tony's like, can't you see I'm fucking talking? Like, yeah. oh, what do you got? And he's like, oh, and there's like, it happens multiple times, but I love when he's like, Tony, I got to take a wicked shit. I'm going back to the Excelsior. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Tony's like, what the fuck is it with you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you can relate to Polly so much in that scenario. Yeah. The best part in that episode, when Polly is out and about in Italy during the day, he's sitting down and he goes, Commendatory, and that one guy just looks at him and doesn't even say anything. Yeah, and Polly's like fucking cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that guy that looks at him—that's David Chase. Oh shit, really? Yeah, that's the creator nice. of the show. Nice. Yeah. Shout out nice. to David Chase. So. DC. Shout out to DC. DC. Oh, <laughs> see, we're still comics and chronic. <laughs> <laughs> The only DC we recognize in this episode. <laughs> Dude, if we could have the Sopranos crew play like DC heroes, who which ones would you guys have play? You know? Heroes. Or villains. Dude. We could do villains, but I mean, I think it'd be fun to have them as I think heroes. Yeah, heroes. <laughs> okay, here's what I'm gonna go. All Out right. the gates. I'm gonna say Tony is Superman for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just bald, like, that. like big. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just past super powerful, <laughs> you know, just like James Gandolfini. Yeah. <laughs> like Superman. That, that like makes that. sense. That makes AJ Superboy. AJ uh, Superboy. Oh. <laughs> I hate um, AJ so much. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> so that one, Polly Walnuts, Green Lantern. I was going to say Polly Walnuts is Green Lantern for sure. Oh, yeah. He could be I like twisting him with his ring. ring. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, and fucking Hal Jordan had the salt and pepper hair yeah, on the side did. too. So that makes paralyzed. perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> I would say Christopher Ooh. as the Flash. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Christopher as the Flash. Uh, Silvio as Batman. Really, uh, Batman. Uh, Silvio as Batman. I don't know if I see him as Batman. I would say like more because he's like a consigliere. I guess like Aquaman. Aquaman. <laughs> Aquaman. The Martian Manhunter because he could read Tony's mind. <laughs> I was gonna say yeah, maybe more, maybe more Martian Manhunter. Like he keeps things like solidified for the crew. That kind yeah. of makes sense. I could see the Batman aspect too because I feel like Silvio dresses the flashiest and he seems like the richest, even though he's clearly like you know he's the second in command, but he's not like the top dog. T- Tony's but. the richest. Yeah, for, no, for sure. But I mean, the way Silvio presents himself is way yeah. more like I he got class, I got suits. money. Yeah. yeah. Which I always love suit. about Silvio. He's not afraid yeah, he's to be the guy. He's always put together. Yeah. <laughs> Although going back to being a piece of shit, Silvio is pretty, you see, especially in the later seasons, he literally hits that girl. Oh, the, the, yeah. The girl Tracy. And he's just like, until you pay me back what you owe, that fucking shaved twat of yours belongs to me. <laughs> yeah. And then, dude, in this season, especially in the poker scene or oh, one of the I poker scenes. With Matthew Bevilacqua. Yes. yes. He goes off on them. He's like, I stick fucking provolone, provolone to my feet at night. S- <laughs> so it smells like his sister's crotch in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. There's just so many good like moments in each episode. Yeah, yeah. This season especially has some so many memorable, I think, moments in the show. Yeah. Janice fucking kills Richie April in this yeah. season. Dude, Richie April is just a, a great character. I don't think he's a psycho. Yeah, he's a, he's a psycho. Nut job. Yeah. He scares me. He gives me like the same tenseness when I watch him in a scene as like Homelander. Like, is this dude about to like oh, shit? Richie kill? April as Homelander. <laughs> yeah, Richie yeah. April as Homelander. Think about that. The oh, stare, shit. just like him staring at yeah. you. Like, I don't want him to stare at me ever, even in real yeah. life. I, I'd be, I'd look away. I'd be like shaking his hand. Like, yeah, great, a- great acting in Sopranos. Uh, don't yeah. 
No, he's cool. I like he's a good villain too. He is. Yeah. He's so and he's like small, so you're just like you should you could kind of like be like, look at this joke, but like he kind of definitely has that Napoleon complex about yeah, him. No, he's crazy. And he keeps telling that story about how he killed Rocco DeMeo. Yeah. He, he took the jacket off Rocco DeMeo and he even says Prick had the toughest or the reputation of being the toughest prick in Essex County. <laughs> Who the by the way, the DeMeo is actually the family they work for. Oh, I see what kind of, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, like, when you go to season one and Jackie April is the boss, he's the he's the, he's the acting boss of the DeMeo family. Yeah, uh, and that's yeah. separate from Junior's crew. Junior right? was part of the DeMeo family. Oh, okay, okay. It wasn't. They didn't. Never became the Sopranos until Tony took the reins. And, and is that became, basically what happens at the end of the season? Like Tony's in charge. I forget. Like, does he like yeah. solidify power? It's what happens at the end, end of, of the first season? Oh, okay. Because I remember there's like a scene towards the end. Yeah, of- you're right. Actually, no. Go back. Seriously, go back and watch. Because the know. first season is when Junior thinks he's in charge. He thinks he's in charge because mm. Tony tells him that me and the captains decided we want you to be boss, but. Tony only did that so that on paper, FBI will look at him and think, okay, cool. Oh, Junior's yeah. boss. Right. And then at, the, at, at Jackie's funeral, they even lean into Tony and they goes, he goes, making, making a, your uncle the boss was a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And then right, he was going to kill Junior at the end of the first season, but Junior gets arrested by the feds. Yeah. Right. Right. And this season, Junior starts going through some health issues. Like he's always at the doctor. Like Tony has to be there with him. The season is also where you meet Bobby Bacala for the first time. Yeah. Even though it's implied that he's been around. In fact, in this season, when you Bobby Bacala, when you meet him, Tony says, Bobby Bacala, last man standing. And he goes, a lot of deaths in your part of the world because they took out Junior's crew except for Bobby. Yeah. And he right. tells Bobby, he's like, you, he, says, he says, you can come out of hiding now. Yeah. And he's a cool character. See, I like Bobby Bacala too. I do yeah. too. Bobby Bacala is a good character. Anthony, I feel like you have Bobby Bacala vibes as far as like your role <laughs> in the mafia. Yeah, I could I could respect that because he's like in the mob, but like you you kind of I he's guess you the assume, ho- most wholesome he's job the most in wholesome the mob. mobster there. Yeah. Right. And <laughs> until is. the last season, he doesn't ever ha- he's never killed he's anybody. He's never killed anybody. And yeah. once Tony hears that, he uses it against him like the piece Dude, of shit he to is. To psychologically punish him. Yep. Because Tony's it's so like, fucked well, up. It's my sister's husband, so I can't kill him. Mm-hmm. And I'm mad at him for beating me up in that fight. Oh man. So yeah. what's the best way to punish him is to make him do the one thing that he hasn't done yet. And you know it's gonna fuck with him. Yeah. It's like, dude, Tony like really is like that hurt. <laughs> yeah, dude. He's a vindictive fuck, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To me, I don't know if that scene hurts more than the scene in, in the store with the, the toy train where, where I always uh, felt bad watching Bobby die. It was sad. Yeah, it's just like, damn. It's like he not Bobby. That. Yeah, not Bobby. Yeah, not Bobby. That's why all I'm saying is if you're going to shoot anybody on Comics and Chronic, don't shoot me. It's going to make people feel bad because I'm the Bobby <laughs> yeah. Bacala yeah. of the shoot, crew. Shoot Cody. <laughs> shoot me. <laughs> shoot the lateness out of Cody. <laughs> oh, try, you can try. I think Cody might actually like avoid a whack because like people are like, all right, Cody's going to be here at this time. And like, the, oh, and like the, yeah. the shooters are waiting for hours, and they're like, "Where is he?" And like, I don't know. He's not gonna. He's not showing up. Let's leave. And as soon as they pull out, Cody pulls in, <laughs> <laughs> just barely missing death. <laughs> it's almost like a spidey sense. But yeah. <laughs> like my body just, if it knows something bad's gonna happen, I'm just like. <laughs> oh, we need to stop making Cody's negative lateness sound like a good thing. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's, that's totally our toxic behavior. Yeah, we're we're yeah. enabling your toxic lateness. Uh, if anything, you're encouraging it. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh shit, this might save my life. I might wait another ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, dude, this episode was a lot of fun. I love the relationship with Tony and uh, what was her name? I Annalisa, always forget. Annalisa. Annalisa. Yeah. Dude, I love their dynamic. Who collects her toenails. Yeah. Yeah, collects her. T- that's some old world Italy shit right there. Yeah. So they can't the put the evil eye. Yeah. My sister believes in that so deeply. Like she has like the bracelet. Like she has a bunch Italians of like. I Italians believe in that shit. Yeah, Jews believe like, in that too, actually. The evil eye. Yeah, the evil eye. I mean, I believe someone could think about you and definitely like want to cause like harmful intentions on your life and, you know, send that. Yeah, but I mean, I don't believe it's like a real thing. I just, of course, people fucking hate other people. I've had a curse put on me before. Really? Uh, I mean, not really. I joke that. (laughs) I I joke that I did. Basically, there was this comedy show. 
And this girl was with these dudes and just loudly talking. And I was the host. And like it was like the second act or the third act, but not the headliner yet. And I leaned over and I was like, hey, guys, this is a comedy show. Shh. You know what I mean? And so sat back up and my roommate was with me and she looked over and she was like, Cody, look, and that woman was just looking at me going, Oh no. Like just like <laughs> dead staring at me, like just mouth moving rapidly, like whispering something oh, under her shit. breath. That's a and I was just dude. like, what is she doing? And she just like would not break eye contact. And I like looked away and then I looked back and she was still just like doing it. And I was like, what the fuck is she doing? <laughs> 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 she definitely placed a curse on you, dude. Yeah, she sounds like she placed a curse. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be worried if I was you. <sighs> it makes count. sense. I feel like a lot of shit happens in your life. <laughs> 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 yeah. Dude, uh, yeah, but I do like that this episode, you meet Furio, who like shows how much of a G he is by fucking like beating a child up. <laughs> yep. In the, in the street. <laughs> in the streets. Yeah. In the, front the of Furio, everybody. Furio's a madman. Yeah. Yeah. I love when Furio turns on like gangster mode. He's like a fucking fearsome motherfucker. Yeah. But he's yeah. so like gentle and loving with Carmela. Yep. Yeah. He's a normal dude. <laughs> he's a normal dude. But then like, dude, like later on, I think in a few episodes after this one, when he goes to collect the money from the dude who runs the massage parlor. Oh man, it's yeah, he goes yeah. on a fucking rampage. He goes on a rampage and you're just like, Jesus Christ. Fury also when he collects the money from Matthew Bevelacqua and Sean Gismonte, and he's like knocking on the door and, and he's like, Yo, open the fucking door before he kicks it down. And then he collects the money and then he's like, Give me a thousand more dollars. And yeah. Matthew's like, he's like a thousand on top of this? And he's just like, Gimme. And then they give him it. He just shakes him down for money because he knows like he's a G and this kid's not. Yeah. And then he like looks at his underwear and he says in Italian to the other guy, he says, these two suck each other's cocks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's like, what the fuck are you just say to me? Yeah. There's like he's going to do anything to fear you. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. yeah right? <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Those two guys who are like Christopher's lackeys, they remind me of Corey and Sean from Boy Meets World. Like that's it's hilarious. like if you drop them into the Sopranos universe, that's who they would become. Yeah. That's so funny. Dude, the kid who plays Matthew Bevilacqua, he's from the Bronx. I'm pretty sure he's actually from like either the Bronx or Eastchester. Oh, he's in a Bronx tale. He's in a Bronx tale, and he's actually that actor is Colombian, grew up in an Italian Bronx neighborhood, and like literally got arrested for breaking and entering and like drug use. Oh Damn. shit. Yeah. So but yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a New York native. Living the dream. Yeah, living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> Those two characters are funny, too. They're idiots. Yeah, but I'm glad when they get, uh, I mean. Yeah, when well, they get killed. They, what, so one of the, they try to kill Christopher first, right? Like they're yeah, in they the, try to kill Christopher and Christopher kills that one dude, Sean. Yes. His name and is actually Sean, too. <laughs> Sean Gismonte, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My theory holds up. And then. Big Pussy and Tony killed Bevilacqua later. Yeah. Oh, that's a brutal he's scene like, mommy, too. Mommy. Yeah. Like, when he's in like the, they're by the docks in the warehouse. Yeah, it's late yeah, at night. In that, like warehouse thing. Yeah. That's a brutal scene from Tony. He's like so angry at him. He's so angry. And he goes, he's like, you sure you don't want something like that tastes better? He's like, no, this is fine. He's like, all right, good. Cause that sugarless motherfucker is the last trick you'll ever fucking have. And then gets up and blasts him. Yeah. That's the thing about the death scenes in Sopranos. Like you're never sure. Like you know, like it's about to happen most of the time, but like it could be like the next sentence, or he might like have a, a little talk with them first. Well, because like, yeah. with Pussy, like, you know, like yeah, like even with Pussy, like you know that all three of them don't want to kill Pussy, right? Like this is truly a matter of they have to. Yeah, right. But watching it, there's like a small part of you that's like maybe you know they'll come to some sort of quick agreement, but that's not you, the reality. You think that, but yeah. in the end, like they're mafia. The dude is literally an FBI informant. They have to kill him. And and that, that scene is yeah. great when they kill Pussy because Silvio goes up top before they even kill him. Because you can tell he's just like, he doesn't want to fucking kill his best friend. Yeah. And then that's a great scene because right before they kill him and B- Big Pussy thinks he's talked his way out of it, they have a shot of tequila together. Yep. And he's telling him about down in uh down in Puerto Rico, I was eating this chick out. And he's like, ah. Yeah. yeah. And then Tony goes, Tony goes, Pussy, did she even really exist? And then he's like, yeah, you remember Dude, that? That was brutal. Yeah, that was sad, man. That, like, oh. Yeah, that line yeah. is that line like, is brutal because, you know, it's like, oh, he's he's lying. He's like he's been lying to live. Like, yeah. 
but you felt bad for pussy too. You're just like, oh, dude. <laughs> no, not it's me. A, it's a rat. Yeah, <laughs> then, then, pussy, then pussy just goes, not in the face, please. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, oh, can I sit down? Let me sit down. And then Tony's yeah, kind of like. Yeah, lightheaded. Yeah. You think Tony's going to be like, sure, sure. And then he's just like, bam, bam, bam. Yeah, like, yeah they all kill him. Mm. I also love that scene because Polly loots his dead body and takes his watch and his yeah, chain. Yeah, because Polly's such a dirtbag. Like we like Paulie's him, but he's such bag. a dirtbag. Yeah, exactly. That's why no one no. in Italy likes him. They're like, look at this fake Italian motherfucker. Like yeah. he's just some like piece of shit. Dude, Polly's Polly's the man, though. Yeah, I love Polly. Yeah, that's, but that's you the you wouldn't want to deal with him in real you, life. In no, real life, Polly. You know that's what I mean. You wouldn't want to deal life, with. You don't want to deal with any of these. Yeah, people. none of these yeah. people. You if want you to do, business. look at look at everyone they deal with. It ends poorly for them. Yeah, they're like a scourge. That's like a big part of the, the show. It's kind of like, oh, isn't this thing that's kind of like people like uh, romanticize and stuff. Look at how it just like destroys entire communities like through its, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's toxic. I mean, there's a scene in this season, not in this episode, but in season two where Tony's talking to Melfi and he's like, oh, remember when I said I idolize people like Gary Cooper, the strong silent type? He's like, you know, people in America, he's just like, they're too, they're too weak. Like, he's just like, they're always uh, complaining. And, like, he's really mad about how he's like seeing the world and it's like, you have yeah. to be like this Tony Soprano tough guy. There's no other way to be like, he can't be any other way. So like, I, I don't know, like sometimes I, I like Tony Soprano like makes points and I'm like, I could kind of see, I could agree with some of the things you're saying. Cause it's also kind of ingrained in me, like Italian culture, you know, like a guy's got to be tough and, and, and all this stuff. But Sopranos was talking about this in like 99, 2000, where I don't think any other shows or media was really dealing with shit like this. You know, Sopranos was also dealing with like trauma and psychology in 1999 Mm -hmm. in a way that shows had not before. Yeah. And in a way that holds up, like watching it today, those, those scenes with Melfi to me feel very, like very recent. Like it feels like they wrote this show last week. Yeah. Yeah. Authentic. There's also like, yeah, there's also just like, even in those scenes and even outside of it, there's just like some really deep writing, like like layered writing here that you can just be like, whoa, this is like it truly is on another level. And David Chase takes a lot of this from his personal life, too. I'm assuming like he says, at least about Livia Soprano is is David Chase's mother, according to him. Talk toxic motherhood. I toxic told you motherhood at it again. <laughs> yeah, at it That's again. the theme of the summer, baby. The true villain of the summer of 2022. <laughs> toxic mother <laughs> summer. <laughs> toxic mother summers. Yeah. <laughs> that was not a toxic mom, though. Carmela Soprano. She's definitely uh, not. You think she is? I, I think I, in the when sense you, that they're when you all com- toxic. Yeah, I think when you compare her to people like Livia, yeah, you're not wrong. Mm-hmm. But dude, like that's what I'm saying. Is like really go back and watch the show and the fact that she enables Tony Soprano both with his lifestyle of cheating and crime, and that she strictly like she lives off of blood money. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. you can't well, call someone like that not toxic. She also interferes with Meadow getting into college by throwing away her acceptance letter to Berkeley. Mm. No, no, no. Uh, Carmela does definitely make some choices that are like mom choices. Like I know what's best. This is what should do, what should happen. But I guess what I, I what I, I guess where I was going at in this episode, right? Carmela's whole thing is is she's she's noticing or she's talking to Pussy's Pussy's wife and she's talking about getting a divorce. And you see Carmela dealing with this. Like she confronts her about it because obviously I think and and I think even Pussy's wife says this straight up to her she's like like are you trying to convince me like it seems like Carmela's whole argument is so she doesn't come to the same conclusions in her head and and divorce Tony because that's like the last thing a Catholic woman should do to her husband like she says that it's completely that whole scene when she's talking to Angie Bumpensero in her house and Angie even says Carmela why are you trying this hard yeah Carmela's like projecting onto Angie. Exactly, exactly. Especially because earlier in that in this episode in Commendatory, Carmela talks to Janice Soprano. And Janice even says, you know, these guys who marry men like Pussy, Bump and Cero. And then Carmela's like, wait, are you talking about me? And Janice yeah, like, no, what? Yeah. And then she's like, you are talking about me. And then Janice says, like, I just find it funny that a woman of your stature and intelligence asks so little from life and is so content mm. with what you have. 
Fucking Janice. I love to hate her, but she Janice, says some shit. She, she wasn't wrong, though, in this scene. Yeah, that's she what I mean. Really she says some shit. That's one of the things that you hate about Janice. She's right, but she also then uses her points in, in, in like very manipulative, oh, deceitful. Yeah. Like her yeah. mom, she's like Tony. Female Tony Soprano. Yeah. For sure. She's brutal, man. She's brutal. She kills Richie, dude, which is actually like I felt good because he did punch her in the face. Yeah, I yeah. liked when she did that. That made yeah, me like, like her a lot more. Dude, I loved it because he goes, Oh, what? You gonna cry now? And she just bah, blasts Yeah, he him does in the not chest. think it's about to happen. Yeah, no, he does not at all. <laughs> yeah, man. Fucking oh Sopranos has great villains, but even the base even the regular cast of characters like does some Crazy they're, shit. They're villains. Everyone's yeah. kind of a villain. <laughs> yeah. I also like in this episode that Christopher, who like goes to Italy for the first time ever in his life and is like, oh, I'm going to climb that mountain. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Just gets high on heroin the entire time. Yeah. The entire time. Do anything. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm going to see that fucking volcano. Never yeah. sees it. And then just, yeah, he's just nodding <laughs> out constantly in the hotel room with that other Italian dude. Yep. Yeah, dude. It's a bummer that Chris is such... It sucks. That's honestly like one of the driving points of his character development. Oh, but, yeah, he's a yeah. drug addict. But I mean, this season also is when we see him go to Hollywood. He meets John Favreau. He lives the yeah. Hollywood life for a little bit in this season. Yeah. And when Tony answer. finds that out, he's not happy. Yeah, he gets pissed. Which is when I really feel bad for Christopher because it's a dream that I could relate to, even though Christopher's a piece of shit. Like it's a dream I could still relate to. He's like he's he's yeah. a mafia dude, but he still wants to be a Hollywood a Hollywood screenwriter. He really yeah. wants to live that life, even <laughs> though he's not he's not cut out for it in any way. That's that's the plight of Anthony Iannaccio. And yep. Anthony Iannaccio didn't choose this gangster life. Nah, I didn't. He chose him, and he wants to be <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> I want to be Hollywood. Uh, maybe he, he took an oath. <laughs> <laughs> to not become Hollywood. Do you think any of us would get made? Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Jake, my interpretation of Jake saying me immediately is that Jake would be the one to, like, if a guy said, do this, he'd be like, bam, what next? Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Jake would. <laughs> yeah, but Jake also. I could see Jake getting whacked before he gets that high just because I feel like Jake could come off as too aggressive, maybe. Like the dude, what's his name? I'm calling him Corey from Boy Meets World, but it's not Corey from Boy Meets World. The dude Matthew from the Bronx. Yeah, you're, you are would be like him where like he's pissing next to Tony. Clown. <laughs> yeah, but that's, you're a clown. We're all clowns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a clown. No one, no one would act like that. The whole point of those two <laughs> characters is that they're complete idiots. Yeah, they always say the wrong thing. Like when he's taking always- a Next they to do Tony. the wrong thing. I mean, <laughs> they're supposed to be running a front brokerage, and they beat up a broker. Yep, like that's yeah. crazy. Like that's just bad for business. That draws attention to the mafia. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, and Chris. Well, Christopher's supposed to keep them in line, and like we're saying, like his arc this season, yeah. he's busy with Hollywood or getting high, or both. Yeah. Definitely or both. both. <laughs> Definitely both. And what's wrong with that? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Christopher does like heroin, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not talking about yeah. that kind of high, folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, I think realistically, if I would be any, like, did we do this on the last episode? Who would yeah, we give we each did. other? Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah, yeah we said I would got be Vito. Vito. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, would be Vito. <laughs> Spanafoot. <laughs> <laughs> you guys put up Bobby too, so I'm getting, I'm collecting. I'm Silvio and Bobby so far. Silvio and Bobby, yeah. <laughs> Jake's. I, I'm the old Don in the wheelchair in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> George Washington yeah. Yeah, Bridge. Yeah. Wilshire <laughs> and Boulevard. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, this, uh, this episode's fun. It's a fun episode. It's cool. Yeah, it's, just, not a, it's not, it's light, but it also, I mean, it takes serious cover serious stuff but it's like it's cool watching tony's struggle with the boss being a woman yeah mm-hmm. i love when he talks to her about that and she goes she goes our men kill each other and it's like that actually makes a lot of sense you know especially like yeah. in any organized crime whether it's drug cartels like you know they're all male and they all murder each other it makes sense that like once there's no men left like someone has to take over but then also, don't we learn in a later season that there is a group and it's run by a woman in America and, and they don't treat it like that? Like she she gets whacked, but there's a woman that's running for a little while. She's uh, she's not running. She's just like a, she's an earner. Uh, you're talking uh, about the fifth season with Steve Buscemi. Yes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, they call her Lady Shylock. Lady Shylock. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, I know you're talking about. And the Philly Tardo waxer. Yeah. Yep. In the yeah. bar. But she's not a boss. Gotcha. She, okay. She's that- just an earner. And speaking of that, we also see in the later seasons, Big Pussy's wife becomes an earner for Tony also. Right. When she gets the body shop. With the body shop. Yeah. So in a way, Tony Soprano is low key very progressive. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's a good argument I want to hear <laughs> Tony Soprano hero of progress <laughs> yeah, but, but there is a few instances where he like sh- it's it's few and far between but like when Vito comes out as gay he's actually talking to Melfi about it after his whole crew is pushing for him to kill him Uh huh. and then Melfi is like, well, it's like what do you think and he's like, he's like I think it's disgusting and then he goes, he's like, honestly, I salute, do what you want. He's like, I don't give a fuck. Like, he just doesn't like, he, he wants to even, he debates keeping him alive. But once it becomes apparent that if he does, he'll lose the respect of the troops. He decides to like, ultimately kill Vito. Mm. But then Phil Leonardo kills him before he can. Yeah, that was fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I like I like how a lot of times it's just an Italian thing. Like even in this episode when Carmela's uh, having dinner with uh Jackie April's wife, Rosalie, Rosalie. And I forget what they're talking about, but she's like, she says, que sera, sera, you know, like it's such like, that's something like my grandpa used to say all the time. Yeah. Like, it's just like a, like, I don't know. Like I, it's definitely like an Italian attitude. I feel like or Italian American attitude to just be like, ah, whatever, like whatever. If this is happening, that's what's happening. If it's bad, oh, whatever. If it's good. God bless. And, and move on. It's just, yeah. I feel like Sopranos captures that so well. Like it's so small, but like, I just, uh, it gets Italian American life so right in a way that makes me appreciate being Italian American more. If that sounds, if that makes sense. I actually think that the Sopranos is like an accurate depiction of Italian American life, even with the mafia being involved in the show, which so many Italian Americans like hate to be portrayed as, but it's like, this captures like American life. Yeah, because it's exactly. not just violence. Exactly. So much of the show is character development, uh, family drama. Yeah, like, right. yeah, there's so many scenes of Tony and Carmela going to like talk with the principal about AJ's behavior. Like, there's real, yeah. relatable shit in this show. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, do you remember the line in this season? Carmela and Tony are yelling to the point where Carmela is like actually fighting him. Finally, like she's like hitting him, and, and then AJ drops something out of the oven or something or out he of goes, the fridge. This, he goes, this is what you want me to get my balls cut for him, my heir. Or yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, you want me to get a vasectomy for this and this is my what? heir? Yeah, this is my <laughs> heir. That's such a hurtful line. Yeah, he, and the way he says it, it's like, mm, you feel it. And if, oh, man, yeah. if my dad said something like that to me, I'd be, I'd be crying. Carmela even yells at him and he goes, Tony! Like, yeah, she says, you apologize. It's a pretty vile thing to say. Yeah. Apo- that's a, another thing about Tony. Like he actually apologizes sometimes, or he'll come back to AJ and be like, "Hey, I'm sorry, I was a dick." But he did, and, and I feel like he's apologized sincerely this time. That's what I mean. Like Tony does do that. I feel like sometimes when I was a kid, my dad said some hurtful shit and never did that, and he wasn't a mafia guy. Dude, well, like, Tony always, has some heart. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, he does have some heart. That's what I'm saying. It's like these characters are not like strictly bad and good. They're very like. There's so much depth to everyone. Yeah, who's, exactly. more, who's a more compelling character, Homelander or Tony Soprano? <laughs> <laughs> Tony Soprano, easily. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> Tony Soprano, there is, you do see like the hope every so often. And and you do, uh, uh, Soprano's like, uh, I only watched it full through once, but as I'm watching, it felt like Tony, at least, was growing sometimes in some areas. Sometimes he kind of regresses and does fucked up shit. But by yeah. the end of the series, he oh he felt like he at least moved somewhere at least a little better. A little and bit. no matter he did fucked up shit to get there. Do, do not get me wrong. That's that's the kicker. Like he's becoming a better person, quote unquote, in some ways. But then he's still doing more fucked up a, shit. Yeah, he's a. Mo- it takes him being a monster to get to uh, you know improve a little bit. Right. Yeah, and there's also like a lot of factors that go into Tony's psychology that have nothing to do with Tony's choices as a person. He was okay by the meet you by the time you meet Tony Soprano season one, which I found crazy when I read this. He's like I think Tony's only supposed to be like 37, 38. Yeah, that's oh, two yeah. years older than me. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so, it's like, uh, so, but he's also like, like going back, like none of them really chose this life. Tony grew up and his dad was a mobster. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. you have, th- and only after 30 some odd years did he finally go to seek therapy. It's like, dude, that's a lot of learned behavior to try and reverse. You know yeah, what I mean? And like, at that point, he was, it's not like he, he was like, 
a top dog. Exactly. It's not like he was just like, it's not like he was like, oh, my dad did this and I, I'm going to do it. It's like Tony he's ascended the ranks. Yeah. yeah he's exactly. yeah. It's like a part of who he is. Exactly. So it's almost like you like these people are very much a product of their environment. Yeah. Love them or hate them. Yeah. Love, Love them to hate them. hate them. Love to hate. Ooh, you know what's another cool moment in season two? They're just they're just coming to me. They're just yeah. coming to me. There's uh the the part where Paulie's at the seance or at the just talking to a medium or a psychic. Yeah, yeah. And that dude it seemed they they heavily imply that that dude knows shit. Like he's actually talking to ghosts or something. Dude, he 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 mentions Mikey Palmici by name, and he goes, he's like, he goes, he asks if it still itches. Talking about the poison ivy. Yeah, and Paulie's like, this is some black magic voodoo shit. He yes. like throws a chair across satanic the satanic black magic, yes. satanic black magic. <laughs> and then he says, "You fucking quiz." Yeah, you and he throws quiz. a chair. At him. <laughs> Dude, I love whenever Polly loses his temper because he just goes crazy. Yeah, yeah. Or when he's even in this episode when they're watching the Godfather DVD and it's not working, and Polly goes, "What this thing needs is what we used to call in the military a Rogaine adjustment." And Christopher's like, "Do you know how to do it?" He's like, "Yeah." He takes his shoe off and he just beats the shit. Yeah. Out of the DVD <laughs> It's also just them arguing about that is funny. They're like, put the disc in. And Christopher's like, the disc is in there. The disc is in like, there. Yeah. And Pussy's like, press eject. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly how it would be, though, if you had a group of uh, Italian guys trying to uh, get a DVD to work. Oh, yeah. 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 That's my dad and uncles, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it really nice. is. Like, sometimes Polly says shit that my dad has said, like, <laughs> in the same cadence and the same uh, it's it's again that's why I, I lean towards Sopranos I think instantly it's just like it feels relatable in a way like from like the, the first time you see in season one like Polly, I think he might is he in the first episode I'm not sure but in episode two or three he's like in Starbucks with Silvio and he like instantly wins me over like them just getting Starbucks he's in Starbucks with pussy Oh, and a he's pussy. Looking, yeah, there he's you go. looking up and he goes, cappuccino, macchiato. He's like, he's like, look at this. They stole everything from us. And he goes, he's like, he's like, they ate pootsie before we gave them the gift of our cuisine. <laughs> <laughs> I like how Jake has the encyclopedic knowledge of Sopranos. Dude, you don't understand. Yeah, that. Dude, you're like I, a wizard right now. How <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like, I wasn't lying. You got to understand. I, I've rewatched the entire series. I couldn't even tell you how many times. I know almost. If you were to give me any episode, like line for line, I can give you verbatim what people say. So that's why like, when people try to argue with me about Sopranos, it's like, nah, dude, I remember <laughs> exactly. Okay, so what are we giving this episode? I'm giving it a six, man. It was fucking yeah. it was super fun, six. super enjoyable. And I'm giving this season a six easily because this is one this of my one favorite of the best, seasons. Yeah, yeah, this is one of my favorite seasons too. I agree. Season two gets a six. Richie Priel's a good villain in it. You Richie see Priel gets a six. You see the death of Richie and Big Pussy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it like wraps up a lot of threads uh, while also setting up for the future, but wraps up a lot of like the season one loose ends and stuff. Dude, wait, we also in this season is also when you see Tony and Richie bust out Dave Scatino's sports store. Oh, Uh, yeah. The dude. What's that dude's name? Patrick. Richard Patrick. The Terminator. Yeah. Yeah. And Peacemaker's dad. He's uh, he's such a good character. He's such a good character in this show. And he's so pathetic, too. Do you remember the scene where uh, they're in there? They're in like the empty store, and I know exactly uh, what you're about to say. Yeah, then uh, he comes in yelling at Tony. He's like, "I'm gonna lose my store. They're gonna come for me." And he's like, "Get back in your fucking hole!" <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he goes, then, you're doing a good job, Davey. Yeah, he feels bad. After. <laughs> yeah. That's why I love Tony Soprano. That yeah, moment dude. is so good. There's also another good moment where Tony's in the store late at night. And he thinks he's alone, and he hears somebody like sleeping in a tent. And he opens it, and it's Dave Scatino. And, he, and he's like, he's like, what are you doing here? And Dave goes, it's my store. And Tony looks around. He's like, yeah, good fucking job. <laughs> 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 yep. Yeah. And then there's yeah. those poker scenes where, I mean, those are those are fun in the show too. I think there's one where Van Halen's playing poker with them, and they Van don't Halen's really. Like, also, Frank Sinatra's son is in this season. Frank Sinatra Jr. Yeah. Yeah, Frank Sinatra Jr. That's actually him too, by the way. Yep. <laughs> they really uh, got yeah, him. Now, in the other episodes, I'm pretty sure who is it? Deion Sanders or someone from the Jets is in it. Like, nice. They know people. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, how do you get to be invited to a mafia poker game? You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Right. Like, who do you? 
I, mean, I just wonder, like, how did Van Halen meet someone that knows Tony Soprano? It's like, hey, you want to come play the mafia game? <laughs> <laughs> oh, not Van Halen. It's what's his name? It's David Lee Roth. That's David Lee Roth. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Van Halen. Van Halen. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, I'm giving it a six. It's a good, yeah. good episode, and it's a great season. I'll give the season a six. Yeah, same. Yeah, easy, easy six. Money. I like nice. how I think it's the very last scene of the last episode of this season and you see I, I was thinking about before which is why i'm like it solidifies in my mind tony is the fucking boss like he smokes the cigar and he's just like that's like just like the very last scene of season two like he, he takes a big puff and he's just blowing the smoke out yeah he's just like he's just that he's just the man like you're just like tony soprano there he yeah. goes yeah yeah <laughs> tony the, the og but James Gandolfini just doing that, like smoking a cigar. You're like, that dude's the man. <laughs> like, it's so funny because the other day I was watching uh, Zero Dark Thirty and James Gandolfini's in that. He plays a CIA director. Oh, shit. And it's so cool to see because his voice is just incredibly different from Tony Soprano. Does he sound more like Kevin Finnerty? Yeah, it sounds a lot more yeah. like Kevin Finnerty, which I'm pretty sure is James's Gandolfini's real voice. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Because like even when I you watch him in interviews, James Gandolfini, he's super soft spoken, like nervous. Yep. Very humble sounding guy, honestly. Yeah. Which Tony Soprano is like not in the slightest. Right. No. He probably had a blast playing Tony Soprano. Yeah, like if you've only seen James Gandolfini play Tony Soprano, you need to see him in an interview to just see how it, it shows. Like he's a great actor, but when you see someone just talk normal and then you see that, it like he's not a guy that just is like, "Hey, I'm uh, James Gandolfini, and I'm here." Yeah. Like he's Whereas not like that Tony Sirico and Big Pussy. Even the they are that. Are yeah, of, yeah, exactly. They are that. Yeah. They're not really acting as much as just like saying lines in a exaggerated <laughs> yeah. way. But dude, I'll tell you, even uh, dude, Michael Imperioli. I follow him on Instagram. Uh-huh. And he's like so like woke and like he progressive is. and soft spoken. It's he's like, a vegan, it's so, like, I think. Yeah, he's like vegan. He's really into like theater and like the whole Roe versus Wade thing. I think he's also straight edge, like his whole life or most of his life. I I, I believe it. Uh, Not like I am straight edge, but he doesn't smoke or drink. He's like the op- yeah. complete opposite of Christopher. Oh, Christopher, yeah, he's not just <laughs> shooting up heroin on the rig. Yeah, which again, he's a good actor. He usually plays the same type of roles, but yeah, I think he does a lot of behind the scenes stuff too, right? He's directed. He, stuff. he produces and directs a lot. Nice, and he has his own playhouse in New York City. Nice. And then him yeah. and uh, Steven Shrippa, Bobby Bacala have their own podcast, Talking yeah. Sopranos. Yeah. Nice. We're not plugging them. Don't listen to them. Yeah. Listen to Don't us listen to while them. Talk yeah. Sopranos. Yeah. Our Dude. Sopranos talk will be the best. It will be better. <laughs> it will be better. Dude, also, RIP to Deezus and Miro, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the OG Bodega Boys. The OG Bodega Boys. Yeah. yeah, I the feel, I feel boys. bad. There's been a lot of rumors that they had beef, Loki. Really? Yeah, I've heard it. Yeah. Hating each other? I guess. Yeah. Well, like, so supposedly on Reddit, Miro had wrote something and I guess people are trying to verify if it's actually him, but like, I guess, you know how like on Instagram, if you have a blue check next to you, you're like a real person, like a famous Yeah. Person. Verified. Yeah. Yeah. On Reddit, it's the same thing. I think it's like a red check. And so it was Miro and he was saying, he was like, dude was mad foobar and only about his bag. And so it sounds like Damn. Jesus wanted to kind of go more Hollywood and yeah. Damn. Damn. I, I like them. I don't really blame him though. Like, fuck it. The dudes came poor from the Bronx. Like, let him go. Yeah, if he's doing his thing. Is yeah. it it seems like what he's getting a better deal out of the two of them? Is that I think it's also it's like because everyone's because I was we've been talking to our friends Booms, and he was like, dude, he's like, he's coming all Hollywood, hanging out with famous people. And I'm like, so what? <laughs> like the dude yeah, keep Miro going. has four kids and is married. Jesus doesn't. Like, let like the dude has more life to live, you know. Yeah. yeah, you know, Jesus went to the same middle school and high school as me. Really? Yep. Nice. I don't know if he was there at the same time as me. I don't know how old he is, but he's, he's he's older than you. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. Older, I think he's, he's older, older than, than me. Us. Yeah, he's older than us. Oh, really? I feel like he's also the funnier out of the two of them. I don't know. I like Jesus a little more. I agree too. Not uh, to stroke the flames. I like them both, honestly. But yeah, I, I like them as a pair. But yeah. They had been like there was, even though they're hilarious still yet, there's, I feel like they haven't been as in sync and you know what I mean? Mm, I agree. Like they're just like, it just seems like it, it hasn't been as strong as it was when they were first going at it together. Especially when they were on Vice. Like, yeah. Yeah. I thought their show was way better on Vice. I agree. It was way better on Vice. And I'm glad like they got a better deal and they got to grow their show on Showtime. But it seems like the quality. At what cost? Yeah. Yeah. Right? 
Like if we sold out to Showtime and the show just got worse, yeah, I, we'd Dude, we'd accept don't it. Worry, we just keep commies, the money. We're never gonna sell out until oh, we no, get a what? big enough offer. Oh yeah, we're gonna yeah, we'll sell out, say, as as, sell out as soon as as soon as I get the check. Yeah, as yeah. soon as that check clears, <laughs> we're not gonna be. You know, we're not gonna sell out like Cody's saying for a little bit of money. Yeah. So if you're we're offering gonna, any at a zero, comment to whatever on Cody and be like, "Yo, these dudes were always mad fake. I never fucked with them." Like that. <laughs> 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 I mean, listen, if 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 it's fake beef. You know, you don't want to wish they break up for like bad reasons, right? But like if it's if it's if it's real if it's fake beef or real beef, if you're both separating and can both like still make some money and like do your own thing separately and then come back together, make more money, why not? I don't know if that's the case, but like, you know what I mean? Like if you're if you're a, a duo well, you're that's a really band big breaks up and then gets back together down the road for a big check. Yeah, but I guess what I'm thinking of is like, let's say I think uh, the only example I can think of right now is Key and Peele, where they are great together, but they go off and do their own completely separate things and are killing it in whatever they do. You know, you, I guess you would like you would, Chong? Outcast. Mm, eh, <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, I guess I just like Cheech and Chong, like I guess Cheech Marion, what did he do? Like Jag, Nash Bridges or some shit? And, and Tommy he acted Chong. a lot. He yeah. was like he was all over the place. But I guess yeah. separately, they so were never Chong. as big as they were together. That's for true, sure. True. I guess what, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I guess maybe Key and Peele is the only example I can think of right now where I think if they got back together, people would be hyped for that because it's like, oh, cool. Now you, it's been a few years. You guys made some sick sketch comedy. Like you're full, you know what I mean? Like there's not a lot of groups like that. I don't know if Jesus and Marrow is that caliber for me, I guess. I like the dudes. I, I want to see them succeed, but like, it's not like I was obsessed with them or anything. I didn't, I don't know. There's only room for so many people who come from the Bronx. Anthony doesn't like to support people from the Bronx. No, I know. Seriously. No, can't do it. You're, you can't from, do my, it. From, <laughs> from the same middle school and high school as me, guys. I, I can't allow that. I gotta, I gotta be that guy. Dude, it's kind of like, kind of like how I hate this other guy, but only he, I try it. Like I, I, I tell a joke. I would say we need to cancel him, but not because he's a bad person or I've heard him doing anything terrible in the slightest just because there can't be two famous Cody cannons. <laughs> There's and, another Cody cannon. Yeah. He's a country singer. Oh shit. Oh dude. yeah. You're right. Cause if I YouTube Cody cannon, it'll be Damn. like Cody cannon country dude, we gotta or something. Take him out, bro. We need yeah. to send the commies after him and assassinate him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you guys get your uh, comics and chronic official commie mask in the mail? It's like the Riddler <laughs> oh, mask. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're amassing an army. That's the Riddler mask, but it's just got like our logo on the front of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, shit. I think that wraps it up for episode two of Sopranos. Commendatory. Hey, commendatory. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Is that your best AO? Hey! 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 Go. hey. Go. hey. <laughs> You're having too much fun with that last one. <laughs> well, we'll see you guys for. Oh, what the- episode next? Oh, yeah. What is I the f- next episode? I don't have the list in front of me. Jake, um, grow up, dude. You grow up, bitch. I'll pull it up. I'll I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Cue it up. Season three, episode six, University. Yeah. Not sure I remember that one, but do we meet Meadow's boyfriend? Is that what this one is? University? Oh, I don't don't know. know. I can't remember. When does he pop up? I want to talk about Meadow's boyfriend. He he pops up next season. (laughs) Okay, cool. (laughs) Because that's when Jackie April also pops up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking Jackie April. All right. Well, see you guys next week. Keep watching Sopranos with us. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I did that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that on the streets of the Bronx. Hi, you're listening to Comics and Chronic, and I'm Jacob H. I'm Cody Cannon. And I'm Anthony Iannaccio. And you can tune in every Thursday to hear new episodes of Comics and Chronic. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Comics and Chronic. That's Comics, the letter N, Chronic. We'll see you guys next week. Woo! Peace.